Today I thought I'd take a look at signal gantries and the options available. You can buy a cheap and cheerful one. You can buy a little bit more upmarket one made of plastic, quite adaptable. Or of course you can go in quite deep and buy one out of brass and make it yourself more of a serious task. But of course, what's the best for you? So here on the, uh, the club layout, we can see um, my old Pratt and Truss gantry that I've used from Chadwick TMD um, in position across two tracks um, and a platform and then a third track. And these are the, this is the, the plastic ratio kit and it retails anywhere between £3.75 and £4. So clearly it's not an expensive commodity. And like any other kind of standard airfix kit, you can build them. But these aren't the only kits available. Um, here's a kit um, that is, uh, let's say, far from ideal. And it was initially brought out by Airfix. And I think the, the moulds were then built by, uh, bought by Dapol. And it kind of, it's cheap and cheerful. And it's a kind of a train set, train set kit. So that's not quite what we want. At the other end, this is a brass kit made by Traintronics, and um, it's quite difficult to build. Well, I'm sorry, no, I found it quite difficult to build. It was my first attempt at putting, a, at, at soldering up a brass kit, but I kind of succeeded, um, and some of the discrepancies will be hidden by Halford's grey primer, as they usually are. Um, and the era that both my layout and the layout um, <coughs> in the Monroe Club is uh, a, a diesel area but with no, without semaphore signals. So what I'm going to do is use these Burco type signals. Um, they're Burco or M, I think it's Ercon is the other one, but it is the same company. Um, the, some come assembled and some you have to assemble yourself. And if we can zoom in a little bit on these. Um, they're either uh, a square uh, head like this one, or if you can see that one, there it is a round head. If you can see that against my hand, zoom even tighter. And apparently, so I'm told, that these round head signals um, were the earlier ones and these square heads were the later. But either way, that's what I'm going to use. And then I'll work on um, two kits of the Pratt & Truss um, gantry to make it fit the, the one I require uh, on, on the, the club layout. So that's what we'll do and we'll, we'll get amongst that. Of course you may choose to use a brass kit if you've never done it before, I thoroughly recommend it, um, but I did find it quite difficult. Um, but then you might find it a lot easier, but you do have to buy the right gear, you know, the right kind of solder, the right soldering iron, the right amount of power, because the brass does deplete the heat quite quickly and the right flux to make it work. But it is an extremely worthwhile thing to do, and I'm sure this will find a place on the new layout. I mentioned these signals, and in the, in the kind of the older, olden days, as it were, in the days of steam, you would have your semaphore signals mounted on top and then... A, um, a barrier around the outside and what happens nowadays is these existing um, signals that, these signals that still exist tend to have the signals mounted against the lattice of the signal itself um, so discount uh, dispelling the the use of the, 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 the top of these signals so um, the first thing you need to do is decide what you want and then, of course, find the right, uh, the right signal gantry that fits your requirement and then do a little bit of research online. And hopefully you can see there are various uh, signal gantries in existence. Some have been modified um, from semaphore down to um, ordinary standard um, illuminated signals. Um, and without too much research, without spending too much time, you can kind of find the sort of style that you wish to, wish to use. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to open up these kits um, with the measurements taken um, on the club layout 
I can then put the kit together because it would take two kits to make uh, the signal gantry I need and then try and wire them together. Of course we've got these wires to hide and what I'm going to try and do is I've bought some uh, some plastic kind of box section bits um, to glue into place so hopefully we can hide these cables um, throughout the uh, through, uh, throughout the model and then bring them down the sides of the of the uprights and we'll see how we get on. So what's in the packet? Well, as you'd expect, there's a set of instructions, which are very, very basic. But then again, it is very much a basic kit. And there are simply just two, um, two plastic strips. And um, there we go. So it's just a case now of cutting them all out of the, uh, the mouldings and then put them together and see what we've got. Well, as you can imagine, to cut out those bits from the two kits took an absolute age. So what I'm going to do now is put the rest of it together. And um, from the measurements um, that I took on the club layout, I need the two stanchions to be around about 19 to 19 and a half centimetres apart. So by kind of laying them out with a ruler, and hopefully we can see this on the other screen. Um, what I'm going to do, this part here overlaps into an area where there's a canal. So what I intend to do is, is cut this end section off so it will just be a kind of a straight upright. Then you'll get the, the kind of lattice work of the, um, of the structure itself as it goes along. Um, and then round about 19 or 19 and a half, that's where I need to have the, uh, the upright coming down. So it kind of works out at 19 is probably the best place. And then what I can do is leave this little area here to overhang the, um, the, the, the track that's on its own, as it were. So you've got the two tracks that come up the, uh, the siding and then you've got the outer track, which is the kind of the faster um, passenger track. So that's what I kind of intend to do. To um, hide the cables, what I thought what I'd use is I've got various types of, um, of plasti strut um, tubing, as it were, and whoops, wrong way. Uh, plastic strut tubing and I've got sort of a square box section I've got a flat section and whichever one I think is the best I'll let you know towards the end of which one I've used um, to hide the the cables from the th from the three signals so that should be good to go as well um, embarrassingly I don't have any plastic weld left a bit foolish really so um, to get this done today I'm going to uh, somehow do it between either um, plastic cement, which is far from ideal, or rocket rabbit super glue. What could possibly go wrong? You may have seen an earlier video of mine where I super glued my fingers together rather embarrassingly. But I use, uh, these aren't ideal, but at the end of the day, I'm sure they'll get the job done just fine. And I think that's about it. We'll, we'll, we'll crack on and uh, I'll see how I get on. Oh, one other thing is um, I cut them out with um, a standard scalpel um, from the moulding and I did cut through one of the um, ladders. Easy done, just, uh, just be very, very careful when you do these things. It's good to use a, uh, a good scalpel, but of course try to cut away from you or cut down rather than cut towards you, otherwise you can end up with cuts on your fingers. Um, and be careful of the items, they are quite small. A lot of the, the components in the pack actually aren't required because um, you use those with the semaphore signals if you choose to buy those from ratios, um, which I don't. Um, and it's just a case really of, of, of using the kit as you see best. I mean, we've got these, um, the, this uh, 
um, footpath that goes across the top of the structure. Um, I doubt if I'm going to use these, um, but I've got loads of these um, reinforcing cross members and they should be ideal um, uh, to give the structure strength. Building little plastic kits um, is fine, but of course when you put them on the layout and you give them a smack, um, you know, they're not that indestructible, let's say. But the one advantage of using the plastic kit as opposed to the brass kit, if you smack that, it gets bent and it can quite easily be written off. And, and these things are like I said, three or four quid a pack, then it's not the end of the world. Um, but if you're going to use the brass kits, then you have to you know, get in your own mind that this is not the, an area that you're going to um, work on and then bend that kit, um, whether it be through a track rubber or whatever, um, if it's part of a, um, a model railway club, you can't always trust the other members you know, to be quite as prudent as yourself. So um, make your choice with care, um, you know, whether you want to go into brass or plastic. So I'll head on down now and get into this and see how I get on. Wish me luck. So here we are back down in uh, West Camel Model Railway uh, on a club afternoon and you can see the gantry here uh, loosely in place. Um, you can see it spans those two tracks, the platform, and then uh, obviously comes out over the first of the, uh, of the main passenger lines. So it looks pretty good. Um, what we need to do now is uh, go back to the studio and spruce it all up. So here we are back again, and hopefully you can see that whilst down uh, in the Model Railway Club, I put a mark on the three girders where um, I need to, which I need to cut out and fit the lights into those areas. Um, so all I'll do now is I'll say remove those three small girders and then put in these bracing uh, pieces, these cross pieces, and figure out what I'm going to do with the cables. So we're a little bit further on now and um, what I've done is I've cut out the three girders um, for where the light, light should sit and if we zoom right in here hopefully you should be able to see that it actually fits in there quite well. Um, in true Charlie style. I still managed to cut out the wrong one, even though I'd marked it. I cut out the wrong one, so I had to cut out the one next to it, and I'll have to repair that one a little later. But just goes to show how uh, silly we can be. So there's uh, the other two openings ready for the other two signals. Of course, before you fit the signals, it makes perfect sense to actually check that they work. So. Um, remembering that you have to use a resistor and that these things are polarity conscious. Hopefully you can see when I connect these up that there's the green light. 
and clearly you need to do this to every signal um, for all the uh, um, for, the, for all the options, the reds and the greens, before you go any further. And if I can switch that over there, take off that crop clip, and stick it on the red, hopefully the red will come on, and yes, it does. Um, the last thing you want to do is obviously install these signals to find out that one of these LEDs never worked in the first place. Um, so uh, there we go. And I've done a little bit more work on the box section. What I thought I would do now is I'll use a small square box section um, to bring the cables um, up from the baseboard. So that will go into, into here. And I'll give you the dimensions of this box section um, at the end. And also a small oblong box section. And I'll use this um, along the base of this uh, gantry to run these cables to that section. And I think that will uh, work out well. Um, when you fit these small um, cross, set, cross members to the top, don't glue them to the areas where you're going to put the signals. It just makes it a little bit more difficult to get the signals in. So glue those onto the areas, uh, the sections where you don't, we aren't going to fit the signals, if that makes sense. When I get this all, all in and glued up now, what I shall do is spray it with grey Halfords and the, sorry, grey Halfords primer, which is kind of a base colour that kind of works. Um, and then I shall refit, uh, the, well, fit the lights properly and then thread the cables then through the box section and I'll see how I get on. Well, it always looks a bit better once you've blown a couple of coats of paint over it. It does look totally different. Before I go any further, I really need to mention the stuff that I've used here and um, for the box section down the side, which I'll show in a section, which is that bit there, um, it's a uh, plastic cart uh, 90622. That's 90622. Um, I think it's 4.8 millimeter uh, square box section. There's four lumps in the pack. And for the tubing that goes horizontally, it was strip. strip styrene 257 and the size is 3.2 by 6.3 millimeters and there's three pieces in there so going back to the model if I just hopefully you can see we're in close enough here um, along the bottom section is where I glued the two um, oblong shaped boxes to run the cables in and the square box will actually go um, here down the side to run the cables down there um, or kind of that way the reason I haven't glued it in is because I'll never be able to run the cables if it's glued into place so the first signal that goes across um, if you remember the, the picture by the kind of the, the main station the cables will come down there they will kind of be loose initially until they get into this box section here um, I've drilled a hole I really don't know if you can see this, tell you. I drilled a hole in every uh, vertical. I used some of the spare legs and I put them vertically inside the, um, inside the signal to, to give it strength, to give it more agility. So there's one there and I've drilled a hole through it. The upright here has got a hole drilled through it to, throw, to thread those cables along here. Then there's a gap because this signal here, those cables then will need to come out and go into this box section along with these and finally these ones here. And I've cut the, I've cut the section out in the box section here to allow the signal uh, to fit in more snugly and then those cables will go into this box section and then hopefully they'll all come out of here. It's not hard to figure out which cables are which because the shortest cables will be naturally from this signal and the mediums and then the shorter ones. So they'll all run through there and all down there. <clears throat> so that's what I'll do next um, and see how I get on. You will be able to see a couple of cables, which are these cables around here and those cables there. And if you can see them, then I'll simply just paint them with a gray paint to try and lose them. 
Um, I think it's starting to come together. It looks uh, reasonably nice. And whilst I remember um, the advantage of using signal gantries on, on your layout rather than just the standard um, upright signals, and I think I've got one here, rather than just one of these, is everyone has got these. They, you know, at every end of every platform, you know, every model railway has got one. Um, whereas the, the, the signal gantries, whilst this, this signal gantry is quite common because it, for, the, for value for money, it's probably the best on the market. Though, um, if you want to kind of make it your own, it's a little bit more um, time, uh, a bit of a labour of love, really. I mean, to make this has taken twice as long as it did for me to put up the back scene um, in the last episode. Um, but, you know, it's kind of your own work, which makes it far more valuable to you. And with your layout, it gives you that extra dimension because it gives you a dimension of height. Um, and a lot of layouts are far too flat. Um, so it gives you, like I say, it gives you the dimension of height and it's a little bit different because not everyone has got one of these, whereas any, uh, anyone can buy one of these and fit them. Anyway, so I'll crack on now and fit those lights and get back to you shortly. So, after about an hour of fiddling around, all the cables are obviously threaded down and through this little box, um, which will then go underneath the club layout to a terminal block and then to the switching. All straightforward, we hope. If I zoom in a little bit now so you can actually see the signals themselves, um, I obviously started, well not perhaps obviously, I started at this end and threaded those in through the box section, through the next box section, and left them out of the hole here, then that and then that one. Then I threaded this box section onto all the wires and then glued it in place and then I took the foot off and then put the foot back on so they all emerge from the bottom. And uh, yeah, um, not necessarily disappointing, but you can see uh, some of the cables through the top. Um, if I can use this drill, perhaps you can see in here and you can see some of the cables um, and again here where the box sections must join together, um, which I don't really think is any, any big deal because at the end of the day, um, I can just get in there with a little bit of gray primer and, uh, and, paint, those, and paint those out. So, um, a worthwhile little, uh, um, little evolution and something that not everyone has got. Well, here's the, uh, the finished item. All I need to do now is to uh, take it back to the club and fit it into the layout. And I'm sure in a future uh, video, I'll show you how it, how it looks. But um, it's well worth doing. To fiddle uh, all the cables through there, probably took the at least the best part of an hour um, and to fit the box section in, and it does look rather nice. Anyway, so that's the end of this video. I think you'll know what to do next. If you uh, haven't subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe, and there should be a video here and here um, for you to watch next. So thank you very much, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.